met with some CIOs yesterday from the state and local government. Now that has been a super surprising market for me where I'm seeing them actually, 2018 was a true change of year for them. Massive workloads in the state, Medicaid systems that are moving off of legacy systems on AWS, justice and public safety systems moving off on AWS. So that's where you're seeing moves, but you know what they shared with me yesterday, uh, and my theme as you saw today was removing barriers, but they talked about acquisition barriers still. That states still don't know how to buy cloud and they were asking for, for help. Can you help kind of educate and work with our acquisition officials? So it's nice when they're asking us for help in areas that they see their own blockers. Cyber Command cannot see today attacks on our country. So they're left to try to go after the offense but all the offense has to do is hit over here. They're looking at these sets of targets, they don't see the attacks, so they wouldn't have seen the attack on Sony. They don't see these devastating attacks, they don't see the thefts. So, the real solution to what you bring up is make it visible. Make it so our nation can defend itself in cyber by seeing the attacks that are hitting us. That should help us protect companies and sectors and help us share that information. It has to be at speed. So we talk about sharing, but it's senseless for me to send you for air traffic control a letter that a plane is located overhead. You get it in the mail seven days later, you think, well, too late. <laughs> that's or, too late. Or fighting, fighting blindfolded. That's right, I mean, so you can't do either. And so what it gets you to is we have to create the new norm for visibility in cyberspace. This does a whole host of things, and, and you were good to bring out, it's also fake news, it's also deception, it's all these other things that are going on. We have to make that visible. So what Ground Station is, is it's a uh, service that you can use like any other cloud service. Just pay for what you use, on demand, you can scale up, you can scale down, and we think that we're in the early stages of opening up innovations in this industry. VMware and AWS announced a partnership in October 2016, uh, and it really was the coming together of the best in the public cloud, with the best in the private cloud for what we describe as the hybrid cloud opportunity. And the past two and a half years, coming up on three years pretty soon, has been incredibly exciting. We started off with some of the key industries that we felt for us, public sector is among our top three industries. But financial services, telco, public sector, healthcare, manufacturing, all the key industries, technology, were looking for ways by which they could take their applications into the cloud without having to refactor and replatform those applications. That's a big deal because it's wasted work. If you could lift and shift and then innovate, and that's the value we brought to the public sector. And some of our earliest customers were customers in the public sector, like MIT, schools, but also the regulated industries. In the on-premise world, we're very strong in almost every civilian, military, the legislative branch, the judicial branch, um, the federal agencies, all of them use us. Millions and millions of workloads. The question really is how, as they think about modernization, can they get the, they get the uh, best benefits of the public cloud while leveraging their VMware footprint? At FINRA, we have a very deliberate technology strategy. And we constantly keep pace with technology in order to affect our business in the best possible way. We always are looking for means to get more efficient and more effective and use our funding for the best possible business value. So to that end, uh, we are completely in the cloud. Uh, for a lot of our market regulation operations, all the applications are in the cloud. We, in fact, we were one of the early adopters of the cloud uh, from that perspective. All of our big data operations were fully operational in the cloud by 2016 itself. That was itself a two-year project that we started in 2014. Then, from 2016, we have been working with uh, machine language, and recently, over the past six months or so, we have been working with uh, neural networks. So, this was an opportunity for us to share what, where we have been, where we are coming from, where we are going, with the intent that whatever we do by way of principles can be adopted by any other enterprise. We are looking to share our journey and to encourage others to adopt technology. That's really what, why we do that.
I mean, the, the, the problems that can be solved with technology now for good will, I think, will outweigh the um, technology for ill, as Jay Carney calls it. So right now, unfortunately, everyone's talking about Facebook and all this nonsense that happened with the elections. I think that's pretty visible and that's painful for people to kind of deal with, but then the reality is that never should have happened. I think you're going to see a resurgence of people that are going to solve problems. And if you look at the software developer persona over the past 10 to 15 years, it went from hire some developers, build a product, ship it, market it, make some money, to develop developers being the front lines, power players in software companies. They're on the front lines, they're making changes, they're moving fast, creating value. I see that kind of paradigm hitting normal people, where they can impact change like a developer would for an application in society. I think you're going to have younger people solving all kinds of crisis around, whether it's op opioid crisis, healthcare, these problems will be solved, and I think cloud computing with AI and machine learning in the role of data will be a big catalyst. A great example it would be um, when you think about all the siloed organizations within our community care, you're unable to track any one one record, and a record could be an individual or an organization. So what, what they're doing is they're moving all those disparate data silos into an opportunity to say, let's dedupe, how many constituents do we have? What type of services do they need? How do we become proactive? So when you take a look at someone who's moved into the community and their health record comes in, what are the services that they need? Because right now, they have to go find those services. And if the county were to do things more proactively, say, hey, these are the services that you need, here is where you can actually go and get them. And it's, it's those individual personalized engagements that once you pull all that data together through all the different organizations, from the beginning of a 911 call, for whatever reason, through their health record, to say this is the care that they need, they, these are the cares that they have, and these are the services that they need, and oh by the way, they might be allergic to something, or they might um, have missed a doctor's appointment, let's go ensure that they're getting the health care. There's one state that's actually even thinking about their senior care. Um, why don't we go put an Alexa in their house to remind them that these are the medications that you need. You have a doctor's appointment at two o'clock. Do you want me to order a ride for you to get to your doctor's appointment on time? That is proactive. You walk around the expo floor here, the booths are much smaller, and it, I didn't understand that at first, and then it clicked for me. If you want to sell services to government, you don't buy a bigger booth, you buy a congressperson, and it turns out those are less expensive. Many technologies can be used uh, for, uh, for good or for ill. We, we have a service at AWS, a facial recognition service. We're certainly not the only company that provides that service to customers. Uh, thus far, since uh, Amazon recognition has been around, uh, we've had um, reports of uh, thousands of uh, positive uses, to, you know, finding missing children, breaking up uh, human sex trafficking, you know, human trafficking rings, uh, uh, assisting law enforcement uh, in positive ways. Uh, we haven't heard yet any uh, cases uh, of abuse by law enforcement, but we certainly understand that that potential exists, and we, uh, we encourage uh, regulators and lawmakers to look closely at that. We've put forth publicly guidelines uh, that we uh, think would be useful uh, as they build a legislative or regulatory framework.